Well, hello there and welcome to this extra video. Uh, we're going to discuss a bit about the design of the dialysis machine. And in particular, we're going to discuss why is it that the dialysis fluid flows in an opposite direction to the blood. How does this help uh, the exchange of substances between the blood and the dialysis fluid? Now, we've seen that it, you know, the, the kind of explanation is that it maintains the concentration gradient uh, across the entire tube. Now, but what exactly does that mean? So we're going to go a bit deeper in this video. Um, now, the first thing to say is that this design where we have uh, one stream of liquid moving in this direction and the other stream of liquid moving in the other direction, this design has a name. It is called the counter current exchange system and you can search that up on YouTube or the internet to learn more about it uh, but let me try to explain it using uh, the example of dialysis okay so let's get going okay so let's discuss the counter current exchange system now so in the counter current exchange system you have two streams of liquid which are flowing in opposite directions right the first stream moving in this direction, it's maybe called the blood, this is the blood, and the other stream moving in the other direction. This is the dialysis fluid. Right, we call this the counter-current uh, exchange. Right, in the, but you might think this is a bit weird, right? Why would you do that? I mean, automatically, naturally, you might think that the better way would be to do it in the same direction. So have the blood come in this direction and have the dialysis fluid move in exactly the same direction, parallel. Right, so this one we will call it the co-current because they're running in the same direction. Or we could call this the parallel because they're both in the same direction and we call this the anti-parallel. Okay. Anti-parallel. Now which system is better? Which system allows more waste product to be removed from the blood. Uh, let's think about it for a bit and let's use some numbers to help us. Which system will help to remove more waste product from the blood? Because that's what we want. I'm going to change my pen color. Okay, so let's look at the parallel system first because this is the one that we think should make sense, right? Now when the blood when the blood first comes in on this end, this end has a lot of waste product. So let's give it a hundred units of waste product. When the dialysis fluid comes in from this end, the dialysis fluid has you know, zero, right? It has no waste product at all. So what's the concentration gradient here? It's very large, right? There's a very big concentration gradient here. So a lot of waste product will move across. Now, as the waste product moves across, this one will decrease and this one will increase. So let's look at the next step. So let's say 20 units are transferred over, 80 and... 20. Right, at this point here, what's the concentration gradient? It'd be 80, 20, so there's still a bit of concentration gradient, 60 of it, uh, 60 difference. So we can draw that some urea will still be transferred over, waste products transferred over. But can you see that the concentration gradient is kind of decreasing across? So in the next step, you're going to see a problem soon. 60, 40. So the concentration gradient is decreasing. And there will reach a time then that they will equalize 50-50. And at this point, there will be no more concentration gradient. They'll have equalized both the blood and the dialysis fluid will have equalized in concentration. So what is the total amount of waste product that has been transferred over in the co in a parallel system? 50 units of waste removed from the blood. Well, of course, this number 50 is just an example, okay? You don't actually have 50 units or whatever. I'm just using these numbers as an example. Let's look at the counter-current system. Now, this one, the blood will come in same with 100, right? And the dialysis fluid will come in from this end with 0. Now, as the blood moves across here and there's exchange taking place between the blood and the dialysis fluid, the amount of 
waste product here should decrease in this direction, right? Does that make sense? So it should decrease. So let's say from 100, um, it goes to 80, 60, 40, 20, right? It should decrease, right? If you think about it. If let's say exchange happens across the entire uh, tubing, which is what the counter current system should do, it should decrease across the whole tubing. Now in this end here, it should increase across the whole tubing. So 20, 0, right? As, as U is transferred over, it should increase in this direction, right? The amount of waste product. So 20, 40, 60, 80. Now, so what we see in the countercurrent uh, system is that even at this end, there is some absorption, right? From 100 units, the waste product will move to 80 units by diffusion. There's a concentration gradient here, there's a concentration gradient here, there's a concentration gradient here, concentration gradient. There's even a concentration gradient at the end of the blood going to leave the dialysis machine. So, in this case, there's a concentration gradient throughout the entire tubing. And the end result is that how many units are removed? Can you see? 20, right? So the end result is that 80 units of waste are removed. So the total amount of waste removed is actually more in a counter-current system because if the tubing is long enough, or you need a long enough tubing, very long, if the tubing is long enough and transfer of substances happens across the whole length of tubing, then actually the countercurrent system allows you to have a greater amount of transfer. Because the high concentration end will meet the high concentration end, but there will still be a concentration gradient here. And the low concentration, right here, where there's the lowest concentration of waste product, we let it be in contact with the dialysis fluid that is fresh. So there will definitely be transfer here. Right, there will still be a concentration gradient here. So this is the merit of the countercurrent. Uh, exchange system over the cold current one, which will just lead to equalization between the two streams, and then only half, in a sense, only half of the amount will be removed in this kind of arrangement. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. If it doesn't help, please go and search out more on the web for other explanations of this.